Hi, Claire. Hey, Yalta. How are you? Good, good. And you? I'm good. Um, so we're here for Citus 12.1 today. Is that right? Yes, we are. And, uh, and for lots of Postgres 16 features as well. That's right. We timed Citus 12.1 to come out within less than a week after the PG-16 um, re release came out, correct? Yes. Yeah, so we, we got we got lots of features from PG-16 sort of for free in Citus, Citus 12.1. By being an extension, so that's that's really that's really great. Okay, well, we are here to welcome everybody who's here live, as well as the many people who watch this after the fact, because that's the beauty of live streams. They go up on YouTube um, afterwards, and they're ready and available for you to watch at your leisure. Um, I'm Claire Giordano. I work on the Postgres and Citus team here at Microsoft. And I'm Yelta. I'm uh, I'm a Citus database engineer at Microsoft, as well as a maintainer of PG Bouncer. And what we're going to do today is um, bring a couple of the Citus database engineers um, onto the live stream um, to give demos of just a few of the new things that are in Citus 12.1 and or in PG 16 that work with Citus 12.1. Um, and so we'll be walking through all of that. Um, now, Postgres 16, and Citus 12.1 obviously are now available in open source. And they're also available in Azure Cosmos um, DB for Postgres. I just took away your thunder, didn't I? Sorry no, about that's that. No, that's fine. It's totally OK. <laughs> okay. Yes, the, we, have, we, have, we have them on Azure. Now. We have it on Azure now as well. OK. And, and that came out pretty quickly as well, um, following all of our normal QA rules and yes, processes. Yes, yeah, we, 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 we tested with the, with the beta from uh, or the release candidate, at least from uh, from PG sixteen, so we so we sort of made sure all the all the systems around running Postgres were still working with Postgres sixteen. So we're uh, yeah. Now everyone that wants to use PG sixteen, you can use it on Azure. So later in the this release party, we will pop up. The, there's a blog post. There are detailed release notes. There's a lot of information available online. Um, so we'll pop those up. But I think we should probably get straight to the demos. Sounds good. Okay. I think everyone is uh, looking forward to those. At least I am. OK. So who does the first introduction? I think I do. I want to bring Nicila Puka here, who's going to be doing a demo of, is it load balancing together with Citus? Is that right? Yep, that's right. OK. Well, welcome, Nicila. It's good to see yeah. you again. Good to see you. Hi. Yeah, thanks. It's good to be here. Um, so yeah, I will be giving a demo on how um, you can use uh, Citus's query from any node capability with the new uh, load balancing support in libpq uh, with uh, PG16. I'm very curious about it because I, I actually implemented this patch for Postgres, so I'm, I'm very very interested to know what you're what you're going to talk about. And how, and how yep. you're going to use it yep. to cite this. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah, so um, uh, to handle a large number of queries, um, the most common method is to distribute the connections across uh, multiple hosts um, with this technique called load balancing, uh, which is now in libpq as well, uh, thanks to Yelte. And um, you can specify a new connection parameter called load balance hosts uh, to random. And it will randomly connect um, to different hosts and their associated IP addresses, which is especially useful for Citus when querying from any node, as I mentioned before. So you can use uh, query from any node to scale throughput by load balancing uh, connections across the nodes in your Citus cluster. So um, I will show you a basic uh, demo on how you can set that up uh, in my local machine with a uh, PG bench uh, benchmark actually, um, so quite the standard um, uh, benchmark. Mm -hmm. So on the right hand side of my screen, I will be showing uh, PG bench commands, and um, on the left hand side, I will be showing stuff related to the Citus cluster, such that we can see the difference, like how we um, how it worked before in libpq and how you can now. Um, actually do the load balancing in libpq version uh, 16. 
uh, with PG-16. So yeah, um, let's start. Uh, I have here, uh, I have set up a um, Citrus uh, database cluster with uh, the coordinator and two worker nodes. And um, what is actually um, distinguishing these um, nodes is the port number in my local machine. So they have different port numbers, which I will be using in the connection string. So um, yeah, let's um, create the um, PG, PG Bench database first that we're going to use. Uh, so um, I'm using the PG Bench command, just initialize the uh, default database on the uh, coordinator. So we can see here that it has created um, these tables. Um, so it has a, a scenario of accounts and branches and uh, uh, the history and the uh, tellers. So um, like a real life uh, scenario, uh, let's say. And uh, now what, we, what I will do is I will distribute these tables because um, of course I want to um, uh, run the PG bench bench benchmark in a, a distributed uh, uh, cluster. So let me just uh, quickly distribute all of them on the uh, account ID and teller ID and branch ID. Uh, so yeah, now I have distributed them and a quick vacuum analyze to have everything um, nice and clean. And um, let, before showing you how we can do stuff with load balance host parameter, I will show you how it worked before. So in libpq, you can uh, actually um, specify, you could actually specify multiple hosts um, in the connection string here. Uh, and the way it would work was that it will uh, try to connect to the host sequentially. And as soon as it connects successfully, it just continues with that one. So basically, if it is able to connect to the coordinator successfully, it will connect to the coordinator um, all the time. So all the connections will go through the coordinator. And um, here, for example, I have, uh, I will run a PG bench benchmark uh, for five seconds and I will open 50 client connections. So basically in uh, PG Bench is doing um, for, um, multiple transaction and for each transaction is doing a select and update and an insert. So um, uh, I will just uh, run the command for five seconds now. Uh, and we expect all the connections to have actually gone through the coordinator. And um, so, it's actually um, low, so uh, let's just run it again like the first time is, uh, is always. Um, so yeah, um, we have uh, this number of transactions uh, processed and we have this uh, TPS. And uh, here I want to show you that um, through the log files, I can actually check um, uh, each connection established to the database by looking at connections with the application name uh, PG Bench. So um, if we look at the uh, coordinator here, so I'm uh, looking for this word in the log file, uh, it will show uh, 103 connections. So I ran this twice, this thing twice. Uh, so that's why it's showing 100. Um, and um, three connections are just maintenance uh, daemon connections from Citus. So all of the um, uh, connections have actually gone through the coordinator. And if we look at the uh, worker uh, log files, they have zero um, connections. So worker zero and uh, finally worker one as well. So zero connections. So yeah, now let's... Um, Let's actually use the load balance hosts uh, parameter uh, to see the difference here. So basically the command is the same as this one with one important change, which is uh, the load balance hosts parameter set to random. So this means um, that, um, let me empty the log files here. This means that um, uh, for, 
each connection will be picked randomly from the list of hosts that I have provided here. And uh, let's also run this um, for uh, five seconds and with 50 client connections. And um, uh, yeah, so it's done. We actually have a higher a number of transactions processed here and uh, a higher um, transactions per second because the the balance has been like the load has been balanced between um, the different nodes and uh, let me now count the number of connections uh, from PG bench in each node so the coordinator has 11 of them so this is what uh, randomization picked and we have 19 connections to uh, worker to the first worker and we have 21 connections to the second worker. So, so, um, so wait, so, so why is it not yep. all the same? Um, because like uh, it just picks every time at random. So um, ah, this okay. is the, um, yeah, it, it uh, occurred this time. So um, uh, in general, you expect like one third of the connections to go like with three nodes, with three hosts, you expect one third of them to go to each host, like for, for a large number of connections. So okay, uh, that makes sense because just, you're not yeah. using a lot of connections now. It, it, it's it's yeah, yeah. I'm just using 50 of them. <clears throat> so uh, it's a uh, randomization picked um, these numbers this time. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, basically, in in a real world, in a real in a real world scenario. Um, this is very useful um, because um, you can distribute um, the load among your worker nodes. You can leave the coordinator out of it because in the coordinator, you would have to do another network trip to the worker nodes um, anyway, because the coordinator doesn't have any data. The worker nodes are the nodes with the data. And you can distribute the load among them uh, with just a single uh, connection string. So it's really as simple as that. You just put uh, the uh, host names uh, separated by a comma and um, libpq will do the rest for you as long as you set the load balance hosts uh, to random. And uh, yeah, so basically that's how um, you can leverage your uh, Citus cluster capabilities with this new um, capability in libpq as well. Cool. Uh, do, do you know... Do you know if this already works on on Azure uh, Cosmos DB for Postgres? Uh, yes, it does. Awesome. So not everybody takes advantage of the query from any node capability, though. That that's a feature that is optional, obviously, and I think only gets used by people with super high performance workloads. Is that correct? or talk to me about when this comes um, in handy. Yeah, so um, basically if you if you expect like um, uh, in your production workload, if you expect um, a huge number of uh, reads and writes to your database um, at like you have some peak times during the day and your workers, they they are powerful, but of course like with, um, with a lot of load, they can like, they can get overloaded if all, all the uh, connections for these reads or writes are going to, to one of them. So you can just uh, use this um, feature to distribute the workload and you can just um, uh, utilize your resources in maximum uh, through, this, um, uh, through this feature. So uh, if, if you have a workload like, like that, so definitely use it. But if you don't expect um, something like this, you can just actually leave load balance hosts uh, to uh, as disabled as it is by default, uh, and it will just um, connect to the same node um, and do the reads and writes from the same node. But definitely, if you have a lot, uh, it's just much better to uh, balance the load, as the name suggests. I mean, <laughs> okay. So, 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 so if you if if you're if you're in danger of maxing out your coordinator node, then then this is this is something you want to use. Yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. Uh, you can avoid a lot of network trips as well, and it will just um, increase your query throughput a lot. Awesome. Um, I think there's a question somewhere. Yeah, there it is. It's showing on the screen. Um, so is it possible to give a load balancing policy um, 
like shard one to 100 should go to worker one and shard 101 to 200 goes to worker two, et cetera? Um, so um, it's currently not possible because um, uh, this uh, feature is actually uh, in libpq in general. So um, it's not a Cytos specific one. Uh, but it definitely could be uh, something that the Cytos team could work on uh, in the future to combine the uh, load balance host parameter with something else such that we actually give even more instruction to libpq like such that the choice is not really so random but like the question suggested to uh, redirect the shards uh, redirect the queries with the specific shards to the worker in which they're at um, but this is just like future work for Cytos. So in Postgres, um, uh, like there's no such thing because like it's a generic Postgres uh, libpq feature. And, and you don't actually need Postgres 16 on the server to use this, right? Uh, no, actually, uh, as long as your libpq uh, is um, on version 16, um, you can you can have Postgres 15 as well for for that matter. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Nicila. Um, This is awesome. I, I'm going to pop up the blog post that you wrote for the entire Citus 12.1 release um, later in the release party. Um, but I loved working with you on that and telling the story about everything that's here. Thanks. It was my pleasure. Cool. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. All right. So now we've got another demo. That was awesome. Um, Let's see what we're doing next. Um, we're going to bring Ikut Bozkurt here. Hello, welcome, everybody. Welcome, Ikut. Hey, Ikut. Claire. Hey, Yelte. Welcome. Hey, Ikut. So in Citus 12.0, the previous release, um, the biggest the news of the release was schema-based sharding, uh, which was a new way of distributing data across the nodes in the cl cluster an option, an alternative, if you will, to the traditional row-based sharding that Citus has employed since the beginning of time. Um, so I know anybody who watched the previous 12.0 release party saw a demo of schema-based sharding more generally. And remind me, Yalta, which use cases schema-based sharding is useful for? It's, it's mostly for multi-tenant uh, SaaS, software as a service, uh applications that uh, that can benefit from it especially if you already have uh postgres set up in a way that every tenant has its own scheme okay also microservices too i suppose um, yes yeah. yes microservices as well okay yeah so I, actually I the difference i can also want to add that the difference between the row based sharding is that uh, tenants uh, would share the same table uh, tenants are just rows in the tables with row-based sharding, but with schema-based sharding, tenant has their own separate schema. As you said, actually, it is very useful for multi-tenant SaaS applications. Ah, okay. Oh, so, so because they're separate tables, you can also add maybe some extra columns or some extra indexes for just one tenant. Yeah. Okay. This is true. That, that sounds that sounds very useful. So I'm actually going to pop something up on the screen really quickly, um, which is just this diagram that um, shows on the left-hand side kind of depicts row-based sharding and on the right-hand side depicts schema-based sharding. I don't know. For me, I'm very visual. This is a useful way to kind of visualize how data gets distributed differently across nodes in a cluster. Um, based on these two mechanisms. Again, row based on the left and schema based on the right. But you're not here today, Ikut, just to demo schema based sharding. You're going to talk about something more specific than that. Is that correct? Yeah, this is correct. Actually, we just uh, added a new feature on top of that schema based sharding. We uh, have just added a new UDF uh, to move those distributed schemas to other nodes uh, easily. Uh, before adding that UDF, we were still able to move those distributed schemas, but we had to perform uh, a little bit more effort to move those schemas to other nodes. But with this release, we have added a, just a UDF to easily move the distributed schemas to other nodes. It's just a single line of SQL code. Uh, 
Uh, and, and just to be clear, the, a, a UDF UDF is a is a function, right? It's a it's the same as a Postgres function. Yeah, it's it's a simple Postgres function that okay. users can execute. Yeah, this is. It right. stands for user defined function, right? In Postgres yeah, terms. Yeah. yeah, actually, this is user defined functions. We can call it functions. This is true. Uh, actually, let me just jump onto the demo before that we. I Sounds can great. Just I can just say that uh, when you would need to move a distributed schema to other node. Uh, actually, this operation should be a rare operation by most of the users. Uh, for example, uh, a, a great use case could be you can have low disk space in on a node. And on this node, you can have a noisy, huge distributed schema. And you just may want to move that schema to other nodes. This is a good use case, I guess. But this should be rare, as I said. Uh, you may also ask, why can't we use rebalancer for that operation? Uh, actually, this is right. We can also use rebalancer. But rebalancer can also make a lot of other moves as well. So you may not want to wait for all those moves to finish. And you can instead, you can uh, selectively move that distributed schema to other nodes. This is the advantage of it, I can say. Uh, Sounds good. I, I hope I never have to use it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will just show an example. As you may remember, uh, we should set the GAC situs. GAC means configuration parameter, Postgres configuration parameter. We should enable the schema based sharding by setting this GAC situs enable schema based sharding to on. I have just uh, uh, actually, first, let me connect the coordinator node to do that. Uh, as I uh, I also created a Citus cluster uh, in a similar way, Naisila did. Uh, we have coordinator node on 9701 port, and we also two other workers on 9701 and 9702. I have just connecting to uh, coordinator node, and then I will need to uh, set this config to on to enable schema based sharding. And after that point on, uh, any schema created will be registered, uh, keep tracked as a distributed schema by Citus. Uh, let me show an example. I will uh, create two tenants schemas, tenant one and tenant two. I will create users and events tables uh, under those schemas. Uh, to showcase an example scenario. Each tenant schema will be having their uh, own users and events tables. And each tenant schema uh, will be keeping track of the user events. And here I just created the tenant one schema. And first, let me verify that this schema is actually tracked as a distributed schema. And as you can see, Citus just uh, shows that schema is distributed schema when I query the site to schemas table. And you can see that tenant one is assigned a collocation ID one. Actually, site to assign a collocation ID to distributed schemas. And uh, when we create uh, tables under that schema, those tables would be also assigned the same collocation ID so that all tables uh, would be put uh, under the same node. Site to just make sure that. Uh, let me just show that with example. Now I will create the users and events table for that tenant schema. And I have created the users tables. Then I will also create the events table. And as I said, uh, those uh, tables under the schema will be collocated uh, on the same node, and they will have the same collocation ID with, with the uh, site schema. Uh, as you see from the previous query, uh, distributed schema's collocation ID one, uh, and now we will query the site shards table. And as you can see, uh, those tables under the schema would also have the same collocation ID of one. They are collocated, and as you can see, they are on the second node, which uh, this port uh, belongs to second node, as I said at the start. 
uh, they are collocated on the second node. And next, I will create another schema. Uh, I name it tenant2. And similarly, I will create uh, users and events tables under that schema. And uh, we can similarly verify that this schema also is tracked as a distributed schema. Uh, and also, we can verify that its tables are collocated under the same node. As you can see, this tenant schema is also assigned a collocation ID. And now we will check that uh, their tables also is assigned the same collocation ID. And when we query the site of shards table, uh, you can see that tenant two tables here is collocated on the first node this time. And they have the collocation ID of two, which is same as the distributed schema's collocation ID. Uh, you may also notice that Cytos just uh, moves the distributed schemas one by one amongst the available nodes. Uh, the first distributed schema is just put on to second node. And when we create the second distributed schema, it's just put on the next available node, which is the first node. And after some quick refresher, I can just show how we can move uh, tenant schema to other nodes. Uh, before doing that, I will just show how we can do it before uh, adding this new uh, UDF. Uh, before adding this UDF, you will have to perform a few more steps, which is a uh, little bit harder to move the schema to other nodes. First, you need to find out which collocation ID that distributed schema has. To do that, uh, we can just query the Cytos schemas table. And I want to find out the tenant one uh, schema's collocation ID. As you can see, it has a collocation ID of one. Then uh, I need to find out any table which also has the same collocation ID. Uh, to do that, I am just querying the site to uh, shards table, and I will search for collocation ID 1. As you can see, we have two options here. Those two tables have the same collocation ID. They are collocated under the same distributed schema. Uh, I may uh, choose any of them uh, for demo purposes, because when I just move uh, any collocated schema, the all, collocate, all other collocated schemas will be also moved to the uh, other nodes. Uh, for demo purposes, I just choose the 102 and 08 short ID uh, table, the user's table. And I also need to find out uh, on which node this table e uh, exists. To find out that, I also uh, query the site of shards table and i saw that that table exists on the second node now finally i can move uh, the tables under that schema uh, to the new node as i said those tables were under the second node as you can see now i just want to move that uh, tables under the schema uh, collectively to the first node uh, to do that i have used the alt site function, which is Cytos move shard placement. It just accepts the shard ID and uh, source nodes name and port, and also destination nodes name and port. When I run this function, uh, all those tables under the schema will be just moved to the destination node, which is the first node. Uh, previously, those tables were under the second node. And we can actually verify that. Let me check that. All those tables is are actually on the first node now. As you can see, those tenant one tables are actually on the first node. Cool. They, so, they so, so it worked. And it worked. Nice. Yeah, it worked. But it, but it uh, takes us a little bit more effort. We have yeah, to, it's it's. Uh, I saw a lot of steps. <laughs> yeah, we need to find out the collocation ID and also the uh, source node name and port. So. It's a little bit hard. Now let me show uh, that how we can use the new UDF to move that uh, schema back to previous nodes. 
as you can see, we moved it to first node. Now I want to move that schema back to the second node by using the new UDF. It is just one liner uh, SQL function. As you can see, uh, I can just run the new UDF site to schema move, and I just give the distributed schema's name and also the destination nodes name and port. I will try to move the whole schema and tables to the second node. And when I run this function, we can also verify that their tables are now on the second node. That, that's much see, easier. Yeah, it's that much easier. Just one line SQL code when compared to previous one. Yeah. Actually, the, another fancy thing with uh, schema move is that uh, it's number locking, which means when I try to open a concurrent session, another session, another parallel session, and I try to uh, modify any table under the schema, and also I uh, create another session. I when I move that schema to other node, that schema movement will not affect. Uh, concurrent updates. Concurrent updates will still run without being interrupted by the schema movement. I want to show this with an example, actually. To do that, I will also create a parallel session to the coordinator node. And uh, I want to insert 5 million of rows to a tenant one table, actually, to users table. Uh, so that's going to take a while. Yeah, it's a, a few seconds, I guess. And after that, I will just enable timing. Uh, and then I will constantly try to update the table. And from the other session, in parallel, I will try to move the schema uh, to other nodes. And we will see if those updates will be interrupted or not. Hopefully, they will not be interrupted. I want to show that. All right, sounds good. Um, yeah, I've just up, uh, enabled the timing. And in a loop, I have just updating users table constantly. And you are seeing that each update almost takes between 3 and 7 milliseconds. And uh, from the parallel session, I will try to move that schema uh, to the first node. As you can see, previously, we have just moved it to the second node now. I am trying to move it to first node. And you will see that those updates will not be uh, interrupted. They will just continue running. And when I run that, up, as you can see, updates are still running without being interrupted. And Sounds good. In, in, the, in the meantime, the move is just continuing. And let us verify it is actually on the first node now. And uh, as you can see, their tables are actually on the first node, and our updates is not interrupted. Awesome. So, so yeah. you, if you are running production traffic, you don't need to worry about it being interrupted. Yeah, it's just seamless process. Uh, very nice feature of that schema move. And just a reminder for anybody who joined late, this is a bit of an advanced feature. Ho hopefully most users won't need to run this. They'll be able to rely on the general rebalancer, um, which is something that most people do employ, right? The rebalancer is something that you need to do use when you are adding a node or perhaps want to make sure that your data is balanced across the nodes for performance reasons, right? Yeah, this is right. Actually, this operation indeed not a common one. So, cool. so, so the so the rebalancer it does this it does these operations in the background. Is this also in the background, or is it, uh, or do you need to keep your connection open when you when you move a schema? Uh, actually, uh, schema move uh, currently uh, uses uh, background workers, uh, so. It should be using uh, background tasks. Uh, you don't need to. OK, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Aikut. This is yeah. This is lovely. Um, I know that this whole area is something that you've worked on a bit. And so congratulations on bringing all this work 
out um, into our released versions of 12.0 and 12.1. Yeah, I just enjoy joining you. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. All right, Yelta. We've got one more demo today, yeah. right? Next up is Adam. Adam Folk. So, yeah. Uh, welcome, Hi. Adam. Hi. Hi, Yelta. Hi, Claire. Good to see you. Same. Um, I can't wait to see you in person again because, of course, we're joining each other today across an ocean. Um, you are going to be doing a demo of PGStat.io, which is a new capability introduced into Postgres 16. Um, actually, yes. I think the lead author was Melanie Plagueman, who is an awesome engineer that um, works on our team here at Microsoft. And you are going to be demoing PGStat.io being used with Citus. So in the context of a yes. distributed cluster, right? Yes, exactly. So, so the, the thing with features like that is we are very happy, as Yelta mentioned, that we are an extension and we can immediately benefit from anything developed for the PostgreSQL vanilla installation. And features like PGStat.io are just crucial to understand what's happening in your cluster. Like you're running some high workloads and something is going slow and you need to learn why is it slow. And previously you had to rely on metrics from the operating system level. And that sometimes is just not enough to get the nitty gritty details of what really is going wrong in my database. Now, if you multiply it into a distributed system, when you have 20 or so machines, then it becomes a huge problem of what's really going on, right? So while uh, this is a PostgreSQL feature itself, I think it's worth to learn how to use it uh, with Citus, especially since it might not be super obvious how you would get all the information that you need into one place. Okay, so that that seems that seems useful. Uh, I, I I sometimes do benchmarks uh, with Citus, uh, so I'm. I mean, it, it sounds like this is something that I would want to uh, want to use when I'm doing those to find out where the performance bottlenecks are. Yeah. Yeah, and I got a sneak peek beforehand, and the the spoiler alert is that you're going to give us a hot tip about how to use PGStat.io more efficiently and effectively with Citus. Okay, so uh, for some setup, uh, I see that my screen is already shared, so I, I guess we can go to the demo. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, let's do it. Sounds, cool. sounds perfect. Okay. Looking so, forward to, uh, uh, to seeing this. For context, I'm running PG16 uh, with Citus 12.1. Uh, and in the sake of saving some time, I'm, I did some preliminary work. So this is a two node cluster set up in the same way as Nicila and I could have. So on port 9700, I have the coordinator node. On 9701, I have the first worker node. And on 02, I have the second worker node. That's a typical developer setup that we have. And apart from that, I run the pgbench initialization step which creates all the pgbench tables, accounts, branches, history tellers that Nicila described. And I also uh, did the preliminary work of uh, distributing that. <clears throat> and I prepared a query that should fit on my screen. Uh, so I distributed the tables. And you can see that these tables are now distributed by AID, BID, TID, uh, which is uh, account ID, branch ID, and the, I think transaction ID or teller ID. Uh, and you can see the table sizes are quite big. This is why I did it before the demo, so we don't have to wait uh, and just, all the time. Just hmm? for clarity, given that um, one of the earlier dem demos was focused on schema-based sharding, the type of sharding technique that you're using here is row the traditional row-based sharding. Row -based sharding. Yes. Okay, yes, exactly. Got it. This which is, is why there's a which is why there's a distribution column for each exactly. of these. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Okay. And and about like if I'm counting sort of correctly, like one and a half gigs of data in total, something like that. Yeah, we can always check what PostgreSQL thinks it has. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a one, little messy. One <laughs> one point five. Okay. All right. But yeah, it, it was messy. So Yelta uh, can count is what we're saying. <laughs> True. Uh, okay, so since I have been running this before, uh, we will have uh, 
already some existing stats. So, so the introduced view pgstat.io uh, has various columns that, that show the statistics for the queries. Like, uh, let, let me run it very briefly. So, so the query that I'm pasting here uh, reads from the pgstat.io view. We filter out only to uh, entries that actually have writes, so more than uh, more than zero writes and more than zero reads, or more than zero reads, and we get, grab some columns from it. So since I've been running this benchmark before, I can already see some entries in this, and let me uh, change the size of my screen briefly to make sure that it all fits, and I will be doing that sometimes. Uh, so we, we can see we have some statistics and we want to start fresh so what we will do here is we will run this command uh, called uh, reset pg start reset shared io and you might remember that you can do something similar when using pg start statements uh, we have a bunch of counters and we want to make sure that we are starting fresh because if i'm running my benchmark right now I don't want to be looking at uh, previous data from previous result sets, but only at the thing that I'm checking here. So I've run this, but the problem is that I, I'm running this only on this one machine. What about the other worker nodes? So I could connect to every one of them, but that's a, a very cumbersome thing to do. So instead, we can use this functionality from uh, Citus itself, which is <clears throat> run command on workers. And what this allows you to do is to send a query to all of your workers and it, it will give you the result. So in the, in the example here, I'm using this fancy quotation technique uh, using the dollar signs. It might have as well been just uh, like a string. That's the same thing, it's just synthetic sugar. And I'm telling it, okay, run this on every worker and give me back the results. So this is the result. Is this a new feature? No, it's a very old Citus functionality that's available, but it comes in handy in situations like that where you want to run something on every node. So, for example, we can now run pg stat reset shared io on every worker node. Uh, and and that's, that's why you use the special quotes. So now you can use yes. quotes within the quotes. Yes, exactly. That's a very convenient method, right? Uh, so it ran it on every node, and now the statistics are reset. We didn't have to connect to every node directly and run it. And it, it, I have two nodes here. I could have done it that way, but imagine if we had 20, right? It would be very cumbersome to go through all of them. Uh, so what you want to do now uh, is disconnect from the cluster because we will actually run the bench. Oh, maybe before I do that, I will show you that the stats are actually reset. So let's uh, run our query again. And you can see it's empty, right? We reset all the counters. The data is wiped, like the, the statistics that we gathered so far are wiped. Uh, so what we will do now is we will uh, run the uh, event, which is the benchmarking tool. Uh, we tell it to run for 15 seconds for the sake of time, and I'm running it. Uh, and I'm going to drop, the, I have an older version here, so it doesn't understand the client connection uh, parameter. So instead, I'm just going to run it for 15 seconds against the coordinator node. So it's running. Uh, it will take the 15 seconds. And what it does right now, it runs the, the benchmark, uh, doing inserts and updates on the coordinator node, which since the tables are sharded, will propagate to all the worker nodes. So now we can, like you can see it, it's done, it runs 106 transactions per second. Don't look at the numbers, everything is running on my local uh, laptop uh, virtualized on uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. So it's not like a performance testing setup. While also streaming uh, your yeah, video yeah, and, your, and your session uh, to this to this awesome, yeah. Absolutely. awesome release party. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to run the same query, right? Like, let's look at the stats and let's make it a bit smaller. So we can see that we only have the check pointer and there is not much happening. But what is happening right now is I'm looking at the stats 
from the coordinator node. And that's not what I might want to do. Like that, there, that's not where the action was. If I connect to uh, node 01 and run the same query, uh, sorry for that, uh, and run the same query, uh, I get much more interesting stuff. And sorry for changing the size of the font. I'm trying to fit the whole thing on the screen. So you can see I, I get more statistics on one of the worker nodes. But as you can imagine, it's not fun to connect to every node and read the stats to get the whole picture. So I guess you can already guess uh, where I'm going with this, which is going back to the coordinator node uh, and using the run command on workers to execute the query on every worker and then compose it into the result set. Now, doing this requires some more uh, a, a more complicated query. So I'm going to paste it so you don't have to wait for me to. That does that does look complicated. Uh, yeah, you can you can perhaps spot the run command on workers and the ah, special yeah. syntax for starting the uh, string. Which so that's here. that's the important takeaway: run command yeah. on workers with PG stat IO, correct? Yeah, exactly, and okay. it builds a, a CTE a, like common table expression that is filled from uh, the PG stat IO view. We, this is the query that we have been running directly on every worker. And it then converts it into JSON and does some other magic to have nice record sets. So when we run this, we have the worker port. So this is statistics from worker one. This is statistics from worker two. We have the backend who was doing the action. We have the context, which in this case is normal execution. It could be vacuum or something else. We have the amount of reads that has been done by uh, each of these. We have the writes that have been done on each of these uh, and all the other stats. So it's, for example, interesting that uh, the, most of the work uh, for writing was done by the checkpointer on the second node. And that could be uh, so. so that, that's the, the thing from these views. So you can learn what was happening. In this case, on a 15 second window, that's totally normal because most writes happen on, on when the checkpointer does writes to the disk. So in this case, it just happened to do a checkpoint. Uh, but this is how you uh, use this view to uh, with Citus to gain some insights. And some of the things that you can do for this is you can look at, for example, the eviction counts uh, that that happen and that might indicate that well you might have undertuned your uh, shared buffers uh, so that it has to evict uh, more uh, pages from memory to fit in more modifications so that's one of the things that you can learn from this amazing functionality uh, so yeah so that's that's how you use it for those of you who want to try this at home, the complex query that's showing at the top of your screen um, can be found in the Citus 12.1 blog post, correct? So you yes. should be able to just cut and paste it from there if yeah, you want to give it a try yourself. Uh, and more so, uh, the blog post also contains all the steps necessary to recreate the benchmark. So we can actually like run the PG bench commands like create the tables, it has the commands to distribute the tables, so you can redo all of this yourself. Awesome. Adam, this is great. I, I love having you give a demo, whatever the context, you. whether you're in person, up on stage, or here on the live stream. Thank Yelta, you. do we have questions? Um, do you have questions? Let me double check. I uh, my, my computer did something weird just now, so uh, I... Uh, I lost my notes for a second. Um, I, I don't have questions. I thought it was super clear. I, th I think it was super clear as well. Uh, uh, main, only maybe one question. What, what do you think is the most important column in the columns you had uh, uh, to look at? Like what's, what's, the, what's the one that most people will, will, should look at if, if they have some, some performance problems? Uh, depends on what you're working with. Uh, like probably hits, like if you hits evictions and absences, is things that I would mostly look at to, to under, and what type of backend does the work. Like what you typically want is 
you want most of the writes to be done by the checkpointer. So if the writes are not being done by the checkpointer, then you might want to look at, okay, why is this backend doing writes to disks and F-syncing a lot? It shouldn't okay. happen. Okay, so, so, so you want the writes to be done by the checkpointer and you want lots of hits because you don't want to have to yes. read from disk in the client package. Yes. Yes. That's, uh, I think that's a that, that's a nice nice takeaway. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Adam, for joining us today. Um, I think we're almost ready to wrap. I'm going to pop my screen up really quickly and and wave goodbye to to Adam for a second. And I just I promised in the beginning uh, to show everybody the. Citus 12.1 blog post, which is obviously you can see from the headline, was really focused on adding Postgres 16 support, um, plus the additional schema based sharding improvements. So there's a lot of information available here um, that you can check out. There's also even more detailed release notes. So on the Citus um, open source project website, there's an updates tab, and you can get to release notes for all of these past releases. Um, 12.1 is obviously at the top. And so then there's just a ton of detail available here um, having to do with some of the Postgres 16 features and how they work in Citus, um, as well as uh, the distributed schema move that we just talked about, um, some, more, some more features as well. So a ton of detail available there. Obviously, you can stay connected with everything that's going on with the Citus open source project on our GitHub repo that I'm showing right now. Um, so there, you can keep track of the commits, you can file issues if you run into anybody. Uh, we obvious, obviously depend on all of our users filing those issues um, so yeah. that we can, we can fix them. And then, um, oh, I also wanted to pop up the Postgres 16 release notes. Um, yeah, because which, that's, that's where a lot of, a lot of great things are like with 12.1 like it's like it added some some nice features with inside this but a lot of the a lot of the goodies they come straight from postgres yeah there's just so much good stuff in here and one of the things that i like too about the postgres 16 release notes is they put the names of the authors um for these new capabilities and these new features here so um I just, I really appreciate it. I mean, that's something that's important across, across all open source communities is attribution. Right? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy there's two two with my name behind it. This time. Oh, really? If I do a little <laughs> search, I'll find your name. Yeah, there you I go. Think, yeah, this one and the, and the load balancing one. Okay, super cool. So yeah, this, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. So there's not as many as the Postgres committers on our on our team, but uh, still, it's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's nice to be recognized this way, I think. And then um, if you have um, questions um, that you don't feel are appropriate to file as GitHub issues yet, maybe it's a question and not an issue, um, on any of the pages on the Citus um, open source website, if you scroll to the bottom, there's a Slack link. So you can join the Citus public Slack. There's a lot of Q&A on there, um, not just with the Citus database engineers, but also um, with others, other users in the community. So that's what I've got to pop up. Yelta, what did I miss? Anything? I think I think we covered everything. Okay. And otherwise, in uh, in a few months we're back and we can we can cover it then. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody who joined and uh, join our Slack if you've got more questions. Um, and uh, pop into GitHub if you've got issues to report too. Awesome. Thanks. Now, where are the rest of our people who gave demos today? There you are, Nicela, Adam, Aikut. Thank you for joining us. And shout out to Teresa Giacomini for producing this in the background thank, too. Thank you. Thank okay. you for all the demos. And Ciao. thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you.